So in the sixth chapter of Galatians, I want to read two verses and I want to ask us to read them together. So when you get to Galatians chapter six, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I want to read verse seven and verse eight together. Ready? Read. Do not be deceived. God is not mine. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And so we are finishing up today this series uh, that we've been doing on sowing and reaping. And actually we're finishing up the larger series on the unseen realm. Uh, and so we've been looking at this, this principle of sowing and reaping because Jesus said in Mark chapter 4 that the kingdom of God is as if a man would cast seed in the ground and he would sleep and rise day and night and the seed would grow up he knows not how. For the earth brings forth fruit of itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. And so Jesus used this principle of sowing and reaping to describe how the kingdom of God works. So then we need to understand this principle so we understand how the kingdom of God works. And one of the things that we learn is that contrary to what we popular, what we uh, typically hear and what's popular is that this principle is about so much more than money. Amen. Amen. I told you all about the, the, the Facebook post I saw and uh, they said I was at church today and my pastor said he was about to start talking about sowing and reaping. I thought he was talking about money. Amen. And he started talking about something different because it's about more than money. Money is the least important part of it. Amen. Amen. So we looked at some specific things that operate on this principle. And we started first with our actions, our decisions. Then we looked at the Word of God. Y'all know the Word of God operates on the principle of sowing and reaping. Amen. Amen. Then we finally got around to talking about finances. But even in the category of finances, when we looked at the things that we receive as a result of our giving, of the five things we looked at, four of them had nothing to do with money. Amen? So sowing and reaping is this kind of all-encompassing principle that impacts so many areas of our life. And because it's impacting our life, then we need to, we need to understand it. We need to know how to leverage it. Amen? But today what we want to do is I want to zoom out and take a more a broader look at the principle of sowing and reaping and break down these two verses uh, in more detail, uh, rather than look at it specifically, we want to look at it just principally, the whole idea of it, and pull out some things. So today, I want to talk about how we sow. I want to talk about where we sow. I want to look at what we sow. And then I want to look at what we reap. Amen. So we got a full schedule today, so let's jump right in. Amen. Amen. So in, in uh, right here in the seventh verse, do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that will he reap. And so we looked at the idea that it says whatever Amen. a person sows. So this is not a limited, narrow thing. It's whatever. And then we look, we, we want to look today and just kind of zoom in on this word, so, whatever a man sows. And uh, in a book that I have called Sparkling Gems from the Greek, uh, written by Rick Renner, who is a accomplished Greek and Hebrew, well, really Greek scholar. And he understands the, the Greek language. He understands the contextual uh, facets of Greek when it was written in back in Roman times. He understands uh, Greek sayings and idioms that things that, that we might not understand. For example, if you have somebody come to this to America from another country and they hear the word knucklehead, that makes no sense to them because it's, it's an American saying. We know what it means. And so there are things like that in the Greek that when, when it was written, it meant something totally different to them than we really understand today or follow. Yeah. And so this is a really helpful resource. And one of the things that Rick Renner points out when breaking down this verse, as he said, the word translated soul does not denote a one-time sowing. 
but rather a person who continually, habitually sows. And then he said, it's better rendered, whatever a person sows, 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 and keeps on habitually sowing and sowing and sowing. So the first thing that we learn from this is sowing is not an act. It's, it's a lifestyle. And it must of necessity be a lifestyle because it says whatever. And we're always doing something. Amen. We're always saying something. We're always deciding something. So that means we're always sowing. Amen. So we need to understand that this, this verse and this principle is about more than just an action. Amen. And sometimes we... We misunderstand and we expect one action to be the end of the story. Yeah. I've been treating people like dirt for 15 years. I did something nice yesterday. <laughs> and nothing's nice has happened to me yet and it's already 930. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. It's sowing and sowing and sowing and habitually sowing and sowing and sowing. I've been abusing and misusing my body for 40 years and I heard a half of a message on healing and they said something about Jesus. But I'm not supernaturally healed. Because we talked about the word grows in us. Yeah. But it's sowing and sowing and sowing. So we have to, we have to let this idea of instantaneous go. Now God does things instantly, but this principle doesn't work on instant. It works on sowing and sowing and sowing and sowing and sowing. Amen? Amen. And, and really, if you keep reading, this, this verse 9 bears out what Rick Renner pointed out about the Greek word sow. Because it says in verse 9, and let us not grow weary Amen. in well, well doing. Let's not grow weary in sowing. Because this thing is not automatic. It's not quick. Amen. It's a process. Amen. We don't go plant some kind of seed in the backyard and then come out the next day looking for a whole full run. Amen. <laughs> so we, how we sow is continue. Somebody say continue. <laughs> and really, again, we all are sowing continually. Yeah. Because whatever we sow, whatever we do is a seed. Amen. 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 Now, let's look at where we sow. And to find out where we sow, we look at verse 7 verse, I'm sorry, verse 8 for he who sows to his flesh, somebody say to his flesh, to his flesh. will of the flesh reap corruption but he who sows to the spirit let me hear you say to the spirit, to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life so there are two places we sow Amen. there is no third option Whatever we sow is either sowing to the flesh or sowing to the spirit. All right. Whatever we sow. Yeah. Two places, the flesh to the spirit. Amen? Amen? And this really is a verse and a concept about where our focus is. Amen. And I don't mean where our focus is today. I mean where our life focus is. Amen. Everybody's life is focused on something. Yeah. Everybody's life. Turn with me to Colossians, the third chapter. In Colossians, the third chapter, I'm going to start in verse 1. Y'all in Colossians chapter 3 yet? Yeah. Amen. Amen. If then you were raised with Christ, how many of y'all were raised with Christ? Let me see your hand. Amen. I don't see y'all hand watching online. Put it up if you've been raised. <laughs> All right. If you were raised with Christ, what are we supposed to do? Seek 
those things which are above. Where Christ is sitting at the right hand of the Father. If we've been raised with Christ, then our focus, our life focus, should be on things above. Amen. Verse 2, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Because where our life is focused, there we automatically suffer. Yes, you, you, you cannot have a life focus over here and so over there. It doesn't work that way. Not sowing and sowing and sowing and habitually sowing and sowing and sowing. You might do one thing opposite your life focus, but our life focus determines where we habitually sow. It determines where we where we make our decisions and where the Bible says where your treasure is, yeah, yeah. there will your heart be also. Where is our treasure? Mm -hmm. So our focus is the critical issue here. Now let's let's uh, so let's do a little bit of an examination here. How many of y'all like doing examination? We want to examine what it is that we our, our life is focused on, or put another way, what are we pursuing? Turn to your neighbor and say, what are you pursuing? See, we're all pursuing something. Everybody's pursuing something. And our pursuits reveal to us where it is that we're sowing and sowing and sowing and sowing. Our, our pursuits, natural pursuits, if they're natural pursuits, we're sowing to the flesh. Are we pursuing money, cars, houses? Are we pursuing titles, positions? Are we pursuing uh, recognition, career? Are we pursuing things that are earthly? Now, none of these things are bad in and of themselves. The issue is what place do they hold in our life? Amen. I have a job, but it's not, it's, it's in the right place. Amen. I have things I like to do. It's in the right place. So the thing is not the issue is what place does it hold? My life is not focused on my job. My life is not focused on my hobbies. My life is focused on things above. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Or are we focused on the eternal things of life? You know, the things that translate. The things that go with you. Amen. How many of y'all know, when you, when you die, some things go with you. So are we focused on our gifting? And developing our gifting? You know, there are people that have gifts from God, and they know it, but they don't have time to develop them. Yeah. If you don't have time to develop your gifts, that tells you something about your life focus. Yeah. Yeah. Are we focused on our calling? What is it that God, God called me to do? Am I focused on that? Or are we too busy to figure that out? What is my purpose? What did God put me here for? What impact am I supposed to make on this planet? Are we focused on that? Are we focused on the word? Are we focused on prayer? Are we focused on the spirit? Are we focused on revival? Things that we take with us. Amen. Things that are of eternal value. Things that determine our eternal position and condition. Amen. 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 See, the things of the spirit determine where we sow. Whether it's to the flesh or to the spirit, determines our eternal position and condition. And if eternity is forever, it makes sense to be focused there. Because one of the things that we all learn, the older we get, is how fast this life goes. And if all we're living for is this life, we're of all men most.
most miserable. Where is our life focus? What are we pursuing? What are we pursuing? Now, to answer this question, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you answer because there are really four things that we can look at to tell us what we're pursuing. The first thing we look at to tell us where our pursuit is or where our life focus is, is where we spend our time and attention. Where do we spend our time and attention? You know, we don't spend time. We sow time. We sow it to the flesh or we sow it to the spirit. Our attention is not given, it's sown. We don't give our attention, we sow our attention. Is it sown to the flesh? Is it sown to the spirit? You know, I did some research and I learned Americans on average spend four hours a day watching television. On average. That means some people spend less, but some people spend more. On average, Americans spend 3.75 hours on their mobile devices, aside from watching television. So when you put them together, that's almost eight hours average. Now, depending on what you're doing on it, you could be sowing to the flesh or to the spirit. But I would suggest most people, most people, <laughs> And then I learned that of that 3.75 hours spent on a mobile device, two and a half of them is spent on social media. We can't take that stuff with us. Amen. Unless we're doing kingdom work with it, which you could do. Amen. But time scrolling on Facebook and, and, and watching TV shows, and, and again, there's nothing wrong with these things in and of themselves if they're in the right place. Yeah. But that stuff, does, when we draw our last breath, that stuff is gone. Amen. But if we're spending our time on spiritual things, giving our attention to spiritual things, coming to church on Sundays, that's, that's sowing to the spirit. Amen. That's giving of our time to spiritual things, coming to class on Wednesday night, spending time every day. Somebody say every day. Every day. In the world. Spending time every day in prayer. These are ways that we sow to the spirit, and these, this is one of the ways we gauge what's my life focus, what am I pursuing. Then our attention. Some, some people, their attention is always on themselves. Yeah. They live for themselves. I said in the 8.30 service, you come tell them your problem, and y'all wind up talking about them. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are just self-centered. They live just my issues, my problems, my wants. But how many of you all know that, that we need to spend time thinking about other people? The Bible says, don't look just on the things of your own, but look on the things of others. And one of the ways that we sow to the Spirit is through serving God. By serving people. Yeah. Are we allocating time to serving God by serving people? Because see, ser see, serving is not just serving. Serving is sowing. We sow service. Amen. We, the ushers right now, Tiffany, sowing. Glory to God. The praise team, they're sowing. Joshua back in the media booth, he's sowing. Are we sowing by serving God through serving people? Time and attention, that's one way that we figure out our life focus. The second thing we look at to figure out our life's focus is effort and energy. Where do we expend our effort and our energy? Does God get our leftovers? You know, when I first got saved, a little while after I got saved, uh, I had a decision that I had to make because I, I played golf. I was, at that time, I was really good. 
can see that today. Today I'm just not very good at all considering stopping. Because if I can't get any better than I am now, I'm just giving it up. But anyway, so I got saved and, you know, if you play golf, you know the time to play golf is in the morning. Early in the morning. Because if you don't play early in the morning, you went for a five-hour thing. And so we would get up, and we would be on the golf course by seven. Oh boy. T stuck in the ground, ready to go. But then you get saved, and now you got to pray. You have to read the Bible. And I knew myself well enough to know if I didn't do it in the morning, I wouldn't do it. So I had to really scale back my golf plan. Because I don't want to give you my leftovers. Yeah. I want to give you. See, for me, for me, everybody's not like this. For me, my best time is the morning. That's my best time. God, I want you to have my best time. I want you to have my effort. I want you to have my energy. And then the rest of the world can have my leftovers. Where are we putting our energy, our effort? Because I know me. If I, if I did my, my devotion in the evening, you know what that would look like? <laughs> that's what it would look like. Now, that's not the case for everybody. But that's the case for me. And I want God to have Our energy determines, it lets us know, it reveals to us our life focus. Turn to John, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 10. Here's the third thing. There are four things that reveal to us our life focus. The first is our time, what gets our time and our attention. The second is what gets our energy and our effort. Third, we see in Mark chapter 10. Y'all follow me so far? Amen. Verse 29, Jesus says, Assuredly I say to you that there is no one who, have, who has left house or brother or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospel who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time Household, brother, sister, mother, children, and lands. Let me stop right there. You notice what was missing off of that, look, that list? Wife. wife. <laughs> you can't get more than one wife. So you know those, uh, those religions that tell you that you, know, you, you serve God and then you have five wives? Jesus didn't say that. Jesus is not co-signing for that. And in the age to come, Eternal life. So this is talking about, hear me, this is talking about our sacrifice. Our sacrifice is not a loss, it's a seed. Amen. And we sow it. See, Jesus is saying, whoever sacrifices for me is going to get something in return, sowing. So what are we sacrificing for? That's the question. That reveals something. Because we, 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 we are willing to sacrifice for a life pursuit. For a life where our life is focused, we, we easily make sacrifices. Amen? Amen? What are we sacrificing for? Because sacrifices, they're not gone after we make them. They're just planted. And we'll see them again. And we'll see him again according to Jesus in this life and in the life to come. The fourth thing that we look at to tell our life focus is what we do with our money. What we do with our money tells us a whole lot about ourselves. So where is our life focus? What are we pursuing? Look at how we spend our time. Look at where we spend our energy. Look at where we sacrifice and look at what we do with our money. That will tell us where our life is focused. 
Amen? Amen. Are we sowing to the flesh or are we sowing to the spirit? Are we spending our time on things of the flesh or the natural or things of the spirit? Are we giving our energy to things of the natural or things of the spirit? Are we making sacrifices? Are we sacrificing natural things for spiritual things? Are we sacrificing temporary things for eternal things? Or are we sacrificing eternal things for temporary things? Amen. And what are we doing with our money? That tells us where our life focus is. Say amen, somebody. Amen. 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 And you know, we cannot make decisions based on earthly things. It's a, it's a mistake to make decisions based on earthly things. I know, turn to uh, Philippians. Actually, I think I want Ephesians. No, Philippians 3, that's right. Turn to Philippians 3. I'm talking about someone to the spirit or someone to the flesh. So Philippians chapter 3. Verse 18 is where I want to look at. 18 and 19. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, who glory in their shame, and who set their minds on earthly things. This is a person that's focused on, life focused on earthly things. So this word, when it says whose God is their belly, that's really talking about their appetites. How many of y'all know people that they just, whatever their body wants, that's just what, that's it. Yeah. Just these fleshly appetites. I know more than one person who told me that they really, they couldn't live for God right now because they needed to have sex. And so my response was, get married. And the response was, more than one person. I can't, I can't see myself having sex with the same woman for the rest of my life. You talk about somebody who God is their appetites. How, listen. Husbands. Love you. In the eternal landscape, sex is nothing. It's nothing. And to forfeit, to make decisions based on that is insane. But, again, where our life focus is, that's what we pursue. Whether it makes sense or not, whether it's destructive or not, wherever our life focus is, our decisions will follow. We don't even have to work at it. And the whole time we're sowing and sowing and sowing and sowing. And we need to be careful because we'll see it again. Now, let's look at uh, let's look uh, at, at reaping. How many of y'all ready to hear about reaping? Yeah. Well, that depends on what you sow. <laughs> <laughs> let's go back to Galatians. You know, one of the things that is a reality of anybody that has a call to ministry on their life is you have to, oftentimes, you got to sacrifice your career. Hey Amen. Pastor Cox can tell you about that. He had a sterling career that he had to walk yeah. away from. Yeah. Yeah. This man, it's not going to too much care for this, but I'm up here. <laughs> <laughs> This man was so dope, the government of Australia Hallelujah. contacted him and said, we want you to come speak at a conference. The government. Amen. This wasn't a company or a dude. This was the government. Walked away from it because when your life 
is in the spirit, you do that. Amen. 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 I don't have to turn down so many promotions because it's going to take me away from my calling. Yeah. So I appreciate the opportunity, but no thank you. Yeah. And you know what's funny? God has a way of making stuff up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I remember I, they, they had, uh, <clears throat> on my job in my research, uh, research company, I was hired in because there was a new project. And you know, when you when you got when you on a new project, you know, everybody takes your calls, your work is at the top of the, you know, you call over the program and they're like, what do you need? So you know you can hot new thing, right? And I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, after a while that program wasn't a new program. And then after a while it left. <laughs> so they asked me to transfer over to a different team because we had another new project coming in. And this team was the owner's son. And the owner didn't work there anymore, so his two sons ran the place. So the, 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 the people that run the place want me on their team. Why? Because oh. well, I, I, I need <laughs> And so I talked to the uh, senior vice president, and I'm asking about it, and I'm like, okay, well, when does the project kick off? And they were like, two months. Two months? You can't kick a project this big off in two months. This was global. China, Mexico, I mean, this was Canada, global. We can't kick the program off. In, yeah, we know time and it's time. I said, okay, well, let me give, give me some time to think about it. So I went home and I prayed. Ask God. No, it's going to take you away from what's more important. And so I wound up, I went in there, I had to tell them, no, they were mad. I mean, they were mad because that was the second time I had turned out. You know what happened? No, see, I'm talking about God as a way of making it up to you. In maybe two years, I wound up working on that project. I didn't have to switch departments, switch to the other team. I had my own, my, the same team, my same schedule. Y'all know about my schedule. Amen. I ain't going to give up my schedule. <laughs> God has a way of making up when we sacrifice things, y'all. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. All right, so we're looking at reading. Y'all keep making me get off track. Y'all <laughs> <laughs> behave. How many of y'all want to talk about reading? Amen. Verse 8, he who sows to the flesh... Will of the flesh reap corruption. He who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. So there are two places you sow, there are two things you reap. We either reap corruption or we reap of everlasting life. Let's start with corruption. Because the person that sows, 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 and habitually sows to the flesh will reap this. The word corruption is a word that literally means ruin, decay. It means that your life will be in a state of continual ruin. Y'all know people that's always in some kind of trouble? Mm -hmm. Always in some kind of dire situation? Y'all know people like that? Don't call their name. And their attitude is always like, you know, my, my, I just, I have bad luck. No, you don't have bad luck. You got bad seed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time. No, you're sowing to the wrong place. Yeah. Now, a, a, a bad thing can happen to anybody. Yeah. But when it keeps on happening, you can, yeah. I'm telling you, people find themselves in some of the craziest predicaments. I'm like, how did you ever wind up here? Again. <laughs> if your life is continually in a state of ruin, check that out. It's not bad luck. That's reaping. What you've sown, sown, and sown, and habitually sown. Turn to Psalms 
Turn with me to Ephesians. I'm gonna, this is going to be a transition from reaping destruction to the other thing that we reap. So, while you're turning there, so Galatians 6, 8 says, He who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, ruin, decay. He who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. So now, let's look at Ephesians 4, verse 17 is where I want to start. If you're in verse 17 of Ephesians 4, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is within them because of the blindness of their heart. Now what I want to use this to point out is this. When we think eternal life, we think it means living forever. But eternal life means much, much more than that. This verse says that, verse 18, their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. You ever notice that people who don't know God, people who haven't accepted Jesus, their life is just missing something. You ever just observed that? It's just something that's like, something is missing. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that people say, say, I said, this happened to me. I said, when I got saved, I said, I knew there was something missing in my life. You know what it was? The life of God was missing. And the life of God is more than just being alive. You ever heard the term somebody's alive but they ain't living? Yeah. That's the difference between the life of God and just being alive. Yeah. The life of God is, it's the word, the, the actual word translated uh, life is zoe. Mm -hmm. And if you look up the definition, the word is literally this. Life as God has it. Mm -hmm. wow. Life to the full. So now when you think about what kind of life does God have? Yeah. God is more than just being alive. Yeah. The life of God is, is, matter of fact, here's another definition. Absolute life. Yeah. Yeah. The life of God is this, this existence that is full. It's filled with peace. And filled with, you know, you ever heard of people who have like died and gone to heaven and came back? Mm -hmm. And one of the things they always say, it was so peaceful. Yeah. See, that's the life of God that permeates heaven. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, the life of God is more than just being alive. It is this fullness where, where you lack nothing, where yeah. there's no depression, there's no, there's no fear, there's no, there's no bondage, there's just joy and peace and, and completeness. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. We can reap of that now. Yeah. Turn to John chapter 5, I think is what I want. John chapter 5. So now get this, John chapter 5, verse 26. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. So when he sent Jesus here, he poured the life of God. So here's this, as the Father has Zoe in himself, so he gave the Son to have Zoe in himself. In himself. So he poured this Zoe into Jesus. And hear me. This is why Jesus was so different. Because he carried the life of God. And he, there was nobody else like Jesus. This is why he lived this, this other level life. 
because he was he walked in the life of God. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And that's why in, in chaotic situations, you know, they were trying to kill Jesus for a long time. Jesus didn't seem to be bothered by that. Because the life of God, I, I walk in peace. I got that life on the inside of me. The life of God allows us to operate to live heaven on earth. Turn to John chapter 10. Verse 10 of John chapter 10. Let's read that together. Everybody in John 10? Yes. Let's read verse 10 together. Ready? Read. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So Jesus is saying, I came that they would have zoe and have it more abundantly. Now that word abundantly. Is a word, let me, let me read you the definition of the word abundant. Super abundant in quantity and superior in quality. <laughs> Jesus came that we would live life that was super abundant in quality, quantity, and superior in quality. Another thing it means is excessive. It means beyond, uh, it means beyond the norm, more uh, uh, exceedingly. So Jesus didn't come just so we would live. He came that we would live a life that was super abundant in quantity and superior. See, that's the kind, Jesus lived a superior life. When Jesus walked with everybody else, he said his life was superior. Yeah. Everybody knew this dude's different. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever he got, nobody else has it. Yeah. Yeah. But that was then. <laughs> now we have it. Yeah. First John says, these things I write to you that you may know that you have so but it's got to be reaped. Yes. We have to reap of that super abundant quantity and superior in quality. And the more we sow and sow and sow and, and habitually sow and sow and sow to the spirit, the more we reap of this super abundant superior life. Amen. In fact, Rick Renner points out that the same tense of the word sow, that tense is used for the word reap. So it means that if we sow and sow and sow and habitually keep sowing and sowing and sowing to the spirit, we will reap and reap and reap and habitually keep reaping and reaping and reaping of sowing. Of God's life. So the longer we go, the more of the life of God, the super abundant in quantity and superior in quality life we experience here on the earth. God never intended to keep Zoe to himself. It was one of the biggest things Satan pulled off in the garden was he stripped Zoe from the earth. But Jesus brought it back. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Yeah. And he didn't just bring it back. He made it available. Yeah. When you get born again, you get Zoe on the inside of you. But it's not over there. We need to reap it. Yeah. And the way we reap it is to keep sowing and sowing and sowing and habitually sowing. So then we can reap and reap and reap and habitually reap of the life of God. Some of y'all know what it feels like. You just look back over your life and you just like, ooh, I, I didn't know that. That's, I didn't know that's what it was. I knew it was something. I knew my life has been on a track. 
And my life has been getting better and better and better and just, just calmer, more peaceful, more joy. Yeah. See, that's reaping of that life, that zoe that Jesus provided for us. So in closing, the whole point, here's the conclusion of the matter. Our life today is no more than a total of what we've sown in the days before. Wherever our life is, our lifestyle, our, uh, the, just the way we live our life is not random. It's very predictable. And so if we don't like where we are, we can change where we'll be. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So where we are reveals to us what we've been sowing and sowing and sowing and habitually sowing. Nobody wakes up where they are and just like, how did I come here? No, no, you sold to get there and you sold to get out. But if you like where you are, then all you have to do is keep sowing what you've been sowing. Amen. Keep sowing your time to the spirit. Keep sowing your energy to the spirit. Keep making sacrifices for the spiritual thing and keep Keep uh, conducting our finances with an eye to the things of God, and we will continue to reap, and we will have a lifestyle of reaping. And you know why we will have a lifestyle of reaping? Because we already do. Amen. Amen. We don't have to work at where we are. We've already done the work. And we're just, we're living in what we've done. But again, the blessing is we can change it. To God. And the whole point of this series and looking at sowing and reaping is to show us how to change our future yeah. or how to maintain where we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. So there's no need in getting, hey, there's no need in being confused about why I am where I am. If you don't like where you are, change it. Glory to God. But listen, don't do something different tomorrow and then on, on, on Tuesday, you know, well, I, 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 I took my wife out to dinner and I said nice things to her the whole evening and she gave me attitude the next day. How you been treating her the five years before that? <laughs> Because whatever we suck.